Kim, I've got three or four or maybe five buckets of granulated honey. And all I want to do is liquefy about a pound of it. But <laughs> but uh how do you, what do you do with the other with the other fifty, forty nine, fifty pounds in that can? Yep. Yep. It's a, it can be a problem. Can you help? You got any comments you want to talk about liquefying honey here for a few minutes? Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Jim Two. And I'm Kim Flatham. And we're at Honeybee Obscura, where every week we talk about something pertaining to beekeeping. And today I've asked Kim to talk for a bit about how to reliquify some of our honey that's granulated. You are listening to Honeybee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, hosts Kim Flottam and Jim Tu explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world. Get ready for an engaging discussion to delight and inform all beekeepers. If you're a long timer or just starting out, Sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. Jim, it's actually it's pretty simple, but there's some caveats you gotta gotta watch for. And the biggest one is too much heat. The only way you're gonna get honey that's solid into liquid is to warm it back up to its internal hive temperature of around 98, 100 degrees and keep it that way for just long enough to get it liquid so it doesn't overheat and you get rid of all of the good things in honey and destroy them and keep the the quality of the honey, the the flavor and the consistency and all of the good stuff still in the the liquid honey. So there's, it, it comes down to two things, in my opinion. It comes down to two things. It's what's your time worth? And how much money do you want to step, spend? And and you can spend a lot of mo- a lot of money buying some of these uh, pieces of equipment, and not spend much time using them. Or you can spend a lot of time and not much money. So it, you can go either way. And I'll, I'll I'll just tell you the start. But you know, take a look at the, any of the bee supply catalogs that are out there. And I'm, I've got better bee at hand. And and what they've got is they've got a blanket that they put around their pail. And you can set the temperature. And you can set that temperature at 85 or 105 or whatever you want, and that blanket will get up to that temperature, and that's all the warmer it'll get. And the warmer it is, the faster it goes, but the more damage or at least the more harm you could do to your honey. And then there's everybody out there, I think, has, it's like a band that goes around your pail. And and that works, but I got to tell you, there's some issues you got to be careful on that one with. Is that band right inside the pail where that band is on the outside gets warmer than the top or the bottom of the pail uh, of the honey in that pail? So you either got to spend some time moving that band up, you know, maybe start at the bottom and move it up slow, or start at the top and move it down slow. But then you're talking about time. But that too, you know, there you you can do some temperature things. Yeah, that band, that band is what is what I have and what I have used historically. It does the job. It's a basic piece of equipment, but it's you were spot on. It's not perfect. Yeah, and 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 some of the older models um, get too hot. Some of the newer ones are real sensitive. You can control the temperature pretty carefully, but getting too hot is the biggest problem. And 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 I'm all for moving it three or four times. And again, it comes down to what's your time worth and how much how much time do you want to spend doing this? So there's the blankets, and then there's there's people. Uh, some some companies have boxes you can put that pail in, and that box will heat up inside. And again, it's temperature sensitive. You can set it for a lower temperature; it'll take longer. And that's actually not a not a good thing either. The longer you've exposed it to too warm temperatures, the more you're going to damage that honey. So you're going to keep it at the ninety five to hundred degree temperature if you can. Let me tell you about my friend Buzz, who made his own. Made his own what? His own heating box. Ah, oh, heating box. Yep. And and he uses you know you you can go to uh, any big hardware store building supply store and get this inch thick heating or inch thick foam you know what I'm yeah. talking about 
bl usually blue, maybe a, maybe silver colored. A four by eight sheet. What he did is he took that four by eight sheet home, and he made he he measured it out and he made a box big enough to hold two five gallon pails. The bottom sits on the floor, so it's insulated there. And that bottom, between the two pails that you can put on that bottom sheet of, of foam, uh, there's about 10 inches between them. And between, and right in that space between those two pails, he put a light bulb holder. And he ran the cord out the bottom of the box. And then he just built the box around, you know, the four sides and the top. So when you get ready to put your honey, either one pail or two, in that box... Uh, you just lift the top off. You put the honey on the bottom, and and put you know put the top back on, and then you turn on the light. And inside the box, there's also a thermometer that you can read from the outside. And he runs it until it gets to be about 110 degrees at the most. That's the air temperature in the box, not the temperature of the honey. That's the air temperature in the box. The temperature of the honey is going to be about 10 degrees less. He says. Hmm. And it takes about, you know, it gets when it gets up to a hundred and 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 ten degrees or so, it takes about twenty four to thirty hours for the t air in that box to get that warm. When it gets that warm, he takes the top off. He turns the pails either ninety or one hundred and eighty degrees, depending on how the honey looks inside. Puts the top back on and waits again until it's you know until it's the right temperature. And usually in two days at the most. The honey in both of those pails is liquid, and it's only, you know, at the most gone up to 100, 105 degrees. So, hold on, hold on. Is there a thermostat that turns the light off? No. Or is he just manually monitoring this simple box? He's manu manually monitoring it, but it's where it's easy for him to do. But you could easily put a thermostat on there, that yeah. would, you know, an off, on-off switch that would turn it off if it reached the temperature that you set it at. Easy to do, inexpensive. This whole thing cost him twenty bucks to build. Yeah, he holds the box together, not not by glue, but what he did is he used long nails, and that way, if something happens and one side breaks or you set something on top and you caves in, you just take the nails out and replace that one piece. So it's adjustable, it's adaptable, it's inexpensive, it's easy to use, and it's safe. Well, I like all of those things. You know, we're showing our age <laughs> because you've got to be using a tungsten bulb in there. If you're using one of the latter-day LED bulbs, yeah, nice heat, efficient lighting, yep. <laughs> much lower wattage and voltage, and no heat. So you've got to be using the older-fashioned tungsten bulbs that gave off more heat than light. But you're right. When you started out, you were very honest with me and with the listeners that you may be spending some time on this. So of course, it's two five-gallon buckets for most people with just a few hives of bees in a small market. That's a lot of liquid honey to deal with there. So Yeah, one of the things that uh, we talked about when I, when I first saw this, because I asked the first question I asked, I said, I got one pail. I don't need one this big. And he says, well, you want it big enough so that that bulb isn't too close to that pail. And the pail still... There's still room in that box for air to circulate around that pail all sides. So mm. it's got to be big enough to accommodate one one bucket. If you're going to just use one, it's got to be bigger than just one bucket. But some of the ones that are available that you can buy already made are are one bucket big. And, and it's a, like a blanket that yeah. touches the yeah. pail on all, all around the sides and the top and the bottom. Well, I've never had this thought, but listening to you and envisioning what your friend has done made me realize this. H honey is going to granulate when you take it away from the bees. I've seen granulated honey in hives, but they were, you know, they were beekeeper-assisted hives. Too big, too much honey that had granulated. But I wonder if honey granulates in small amounts in those natural cavities, so that this is not really an issue. Is the heat maintained? You, When you started out, you said that 90 degrees, 95 degrees. I mean, that's a common temperature in my ancestral home down in South Alabama. That was a routine day. And that hive sitting out in the sun would be much hotter. So in the hive, in those warm climates, the honey was never going to granulate, was it? Probably pretty close. Uh, 
one thing I forgot to mention about this is you could put a case of honey in there. You can know, tw- 24 or 12 jars, loosen the lids, um, and you'd have the same effect. You'd come out with all those jars liquefied. Yeah. Well, I like I like this whole idea. It's simple. You're, you're right. I mean, you don't even have to have a particular wiring. You could just lay a trouble light in there. I'm wondering, are we saying something that'll start a fire? In what way, Kim, are we giving out bad advice or having a conversation here that has some unforeseen consequence? I don't see anything readily. You bring up a good point about flammable material, though, in that box, because you get distracted and you forget or, or you know, whatever, and suddenly you're not there in, in 24 to 30 hours to turn those pails. Uh, can that Can that internal temperature get hot enough to do something to that foam? And that's a good question. Well, there is that caveat. Let me tell you a story about the band heater. And let me add all kind of caveats to this before I even begin the story. The band heater have been used to liquefy hundreds and hundreds of buckets. It was well used. It was no longer new, Kim. But we left that band heater on one night in my lab when I was still working for Ohio State. And the next day we came in and that heater had melted through the plastic five-gallon bucket and parts of it. And, of course, everything above the melt point had leaked out, was scorched and useless. And what a mess that was. So you almost have to leave these heaters going overnight. But it seems to me, Kim that it's okay to worry about those heaters while they're on, no matter what kind of heater they are, because this is something we had to come up with because honey granulates when we take it away from the bees, if it's good honey. Yep. So there's some level of caution you you need to make there. I guess you could be careless doing almost anything and get hurt or ruin or, you know, something, but with a modest amount of caution, this box works, but the yeah. band things work, the blankets work, the boxes that you put your pails in work, and and anywhere that you've got electricity and flammable material, there's, you know, the opportunity for a problem exists. Why don't we take a break here from a sponsor who has a lot of these devices that we've talked about. Hey, podcast listeners, here's what we've been waiting for all year long. It's time to harvest and extract the honey. When you're ready to bottle and sell your crop, head over to BetterBee.com. There you can shop for custom honey labels and glass or plastic honey containers. As your partners in Better Beekeeping, Better Bee does all the work of figuring out the weight each honey container will hold, not just the standard water weight or volume measure. So you can choose from the classics or go bold and different with a great selection of uniquely designed bottles. Check out our 50-plus container options and order with confidence at BetterBee.com. Well, aside from being careful and being cautious, here's one that's really hard to screw up. And this was given to me, Kim, by a by a man who was not a beekeeper. Didn't want to be a beekeeper, had no interest in being a beekeeper. But he liked to buy honey and eat it. And when it would granulate, he was from Alabama now. That's important. Where you got a natural hot day. He would put his granulated honey in two black socks. And he would set that outside in the sun. And as the mood struck him, he loosened the cap, which you do every time, listeners. Loosen the cap. He would go out and check that naturally heated hot jar of honey. And when it was re-liquefied to his, uh, his need, he's done. So I'd recommend clean socks, Kim, since you're putting it around your breakfast jar. But he, I, you know, this guy was just chatting. that He did this all the time, and it helped him with keeping his breakfast jar of honey grand, uh, liquefied. I wonder if that'd work in Ohio. There's a problem, isn't it? Well, you know, right now... And the, as the sun, summer is waning, you could squeeze it out. You could squeeze out something like that. But I'd really recommend probably, if you use socks, to maybe put a light bulb close by it or something there like you're go. talking about. Yeah. So all the way from absolutely brain dead simple, all the way up through building boxes with light bulbs, and then maybe 
bucket bands or heaters. Can we have we've there was a picture. I never saw the gadget, Kim. And I, I just saw the pictures. And again, it was in a hot climate in Southern California. At, they would put metal buckets and, and later on plastic buckets in the sun. And they had a hole that, that would let the honey leak out as it, as, it grand, as it liquefied. So in the sun, left out for a, what, a day or two or three, the honey was coming out in the sun, liquid would dropping into a container, a funnel below, and being recollected as liquid honey down below using solar energy. Do you know any other solar methods other than my friend's socks and this one time I saw a picture in Southern California thing? Do you know any other solar ways? You know, I thought about wax melters. Could you, you know, gadget boxes we put in the bee yard. Can you put uh, granulated honey in a wax melter, in a container, in a jar and liquefy it? I don't know. I have never done that. Well, the, the the issue you run into there is temperature control. Yep. Yep. And and you know, if it's hot enough, it gets hot enough in there to melt wax, you got a problem because it's gonna be too hot for for maintaining the quality of the honey you got in there. Now you can, you know, monitor it, run out and take a look every once in a while and see how it's doing, put a thermometer in there, open it up a little bit if it's getting too warm. And I I suppose that would work. I it it that kind of that kind of um What's the word I want? That kind of lack of control uh, or the time to constantly monitor it kind of detracts from that technique a little bit. But uh, I, I suppose you could make it work. Well, there's all kind of detractions. The thing is, there's always clever people out there. Yeah. Now, they're doing something that I don't know about, you know. So, so somewhere someone's figured out, you know, the sock thing. The bucket's turned upside down with small holes in the lid in the hot sun in Southern California. So it really depends on where you are. Well, Southern California yeah. this year is going to be pretty easy to liquefy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of places in the country is going to be easy yep. to liquefy honey. Yeah. Well, the thing that I'm struck, what started the whole thing with, with me on this topic, Kemp, was that I really don't want to have to liquefy a whole bucket because I want to fill a pound jar that I keep in my cabinet for using in my food. So I'm trying to come up with a way. I, I've never done this, but I wonder if we could ask people who are listening if they've got a technique worked out where I can go out to a five-gallon bucket that's granulated with what? An ice cream scoop? There you go. Or a heavy steel spoon and scoop out a pound two pounds of granulated honey, and then do what, Kim? Yeah, good question. Mi microwave it? Or no, no. Put it in a jar, put it in the oven. What are you going to do when you get it out? You know, some people would probably say, why don't you just eat it granulated, Jim? Can we go with that? It's kind of gritty, but if you're putting it on hot oatmeal, would that liquefy it enough? How much, how much liquefaction do I really need? I mean... People will eat creamed honey all the time. Yep. So that's what I wanted to do was I don't want to have to cook it over and over again. So you heat up a five-gallon bucket. I've got a valve on the bottom. I drain it off three pounds. Then I close the valve off. I take my honey in. And then what? Just a month later, that bucket's granulated again. So I heat it up again. Every time I do that, even if I'm staying at 95 to 100 degrees or so, I'm I'm cooking off some of the volatiles off that honey. It's after a while, I've just got a sweet syrup left there. So if anybody's got a neat technique for liquefying small amounts of honey, I'd like to hear about it. And I'll be certain Kim gets it just because it's kind of a hassle to granulate a five-gallon bucket over and over. I'm sorry, to liquefy a five-gallon bucket over and over again just to get my small amount off. Well, I think it's about time to wrap this up, but I got to tell you what 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 I'm hearing here right now is just bottle that whole bucket and let the bottles uh, crystallize, and then you can warm them up one or two at a time uh, over the next, you know, as you yep. use it, rather than yep. heat that five gallons up every time. So if you if that way you're not heating the honey over and over and over and over again. You're heating a little bit of honey once. Well, I'm having to reheat those little bottles, though, more than one time. So, But it's not over and over and over again. You're right on that. All right. 
I've got honey granulated here in cans. I've got honey on the bees. I still need to take off. I've got enough honey for a, about sixty-five to 70,000 biscuits. <laughs> well, I, I, I tell you what, save me a couple. I'll be down. <laughs> All right. Want to do something? I got to liquefy some honey some way for my family, for me. My whole family eats honey, and they want me to be in charge of it. So I will be the guy handling it. All right. Know this. Be careful with heat because you can really ruin some honey fairly quickly with too much heat. And Good advice. Good advice. Respect fire. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Until next Thanks time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>